head coach for the Washington Patriots baseball team, head coach JT DeSarno. How are you doing today, Coach DeSarno? Good, guys. Appreciate you having me on. Thanks for coming on. You guys started the season the other night with a route of Berkeley Springs, and uh, obviously we were talking with uh, Ber- Berkeley Post-14 Hornets uh, manager Trip Tobin, and he said, you know, as a baseball coach, you never want to win a game like that, but uh, you're able to get a lot of guys in the lineup and see some live pitching. Yeah, you know, it's always good to face a different color jersey after several weeks of practice and preseason prep. Um, you know, Berkeley Springs, young team, well coached and you know we came out with a plan to jump on them early and work that out so you know got some of the younger guys in and got them some experience on the varsity level which you know may pay off as we move down the road coach your team uh had a good season last year uh, clearly a uh, talented group um what are you looking forward to about this season uh and how do you i guess take the next step to try to uh, make it a little bit farther in the postseason this year. Yeah, so, you know, looking at last season, had a really hot start, a lot of seniors on the team, you know, a lot of leadership that we lost. But, um, you know, maybe keeping more of an even keel throughout the season, we died off towards the end and we weren't playing our best ball at the most important time. So I think we can just kind of keep a level head throughout the entire regular season and take each day to get better in preparation for the playoffs. Uh, Coach, you guys are bringing back some of your players like Colin Reed and Cam Moore that we saw a lot of last season. Who are some of the newer guys that have kind of stepped up into bigger roles that you're looking forward for us and everyone else to be able to see this season? Yeah, so, uh, you know, obviously it starts off when anytime you get your three and four hitters back in the next year, it votes well for your for yourself offensively. Um, Cameron will be making the move from mainly outfield to behind the plate this year. He's kind of waited his turn, so I'm excited to see you know him in that role defensively. Uh, some other guys, you know, obviously there's Collins, and, you know, he's not only the leader, but, you know, he commands the entire field anytime he steps on it. He's always a step ahead of the other team, it seems like, with what they're going to do. So, you know, he's my coach on the field. Um you know, some of my guys that got some playing time on varsity last year, I expect to really step up. Brandon Dunbar, Josh McCarthy, both were kind of like my 10 and 11 guys off the bench last year and uh, played some significant innings, you know, as I needed them last year. I'm going to rely on them heavy. You know, both of them probably see a lot of time in the outfield and on the mound as well. Um, I have another senior that took a year off, Andy Clem. He's, you know, really flashed his glove through the preseason and, you know, really happy that he made a decision to come back and play for his senior year. Uh, other than that, you know, we have a lot of other pieces and some hungry, hungry young kids that are pushing the older guys every day in practice. So, you know, we're kind of doing that whole thing, iron sharpens iron, and hopefully, you know, the best competition we see every day in practice. And, Coach, tell us about a guy that, you know, I looked at the game changer the other night. He was in the starting lineup, junior Jay Mason Earl. He had he went two for three, four RBIs. Uh, he wasn't on your team last year, was he? So, last year, Jameson, um, he played JV primarily. And then I brought him up onto the varsity for uh, the playoff run. He got in, got in that bat last year, won at bat, and he put a single out into left center field. So he is one. He's going to be the third primary outfielder this year, making the step up to varsity. And, you know, he's more than capable. He's a dangerous bat in the middle of the lineup. And, you know, I look for him to drive in a whole lot of runs as we move along in the season. Coach, when you look at the uh, EPAC this year, um, looks like it's going to be another – you know, competitive year, you have you guys, uh, Jefferson, Martinsburg are always, you know, top-tier teams. Musselman returns a ton. Hedgesville returns a ton. And Spring Mills was pretty young last year and should be a lot better this year. So uh, just what's your thoughts on the EPAC this year and uh, what are you looking forward to about conference play? You know, the funny thing about this area is it seems like each team loses those big names each year, but somehow, some way, we all kind of put it together the following year and new kids and new names and faces step up and make it a whole competition the entire season. You know, you get kind of 
a little more excited on those game days. You know, we got a lot more out of conference games this year than we did last year as a school. So, you know, those are important as well. But, you know, when you get to the EPAC teams and, you know, the kids know each other a little more and it gets a little more competitive. And there's no doubt, as I said last year, whoever makes it to the state tournament out of this area definitely will have earned their way there. And, Coach, uh, a big change to your stadium as well this year. You guys add lights, so you'll have night games. Uh, how exciting is that for you and the kids? Well, you know, for me, it just kind of makes it a lot easier making the schedule and planning things and having the ability to have all my kids in one place most of the days. So that's a blessing for me. Um, as far as the kids go, I think they're really excited. I just feel a little bad for all the kids that, you know, just graduated or played here in the past that didn't get to – experience the night game at home but um you know we're looking forward to it it's going to be a little bit of a transition getting some practices in underneath the lights it's a little bit of a different look here playing under the lights versus playing during the day so something we're getting used to but uh might be a pretty decent home field advantage and coach looking at your schedule this year going back to myrtle beach once again for the mingo bay classic seeing some good teams down there a lot of uh regional out of conference games tonight you guys go to uh ashburn virginia taking on a really good Stonebridge team a power there uh clear spring you have on your schedule uh, they were a maryland state champion i believe broad run out of virginia you get a team like Greenbrier East coming in, uh, you know, that's a pretty good out-of-conference schedule, you know, and I'm missing a few teams on there, obviously, that are coming in or you're going to see them, but uh, it seems like you built a pretty tough non-conference schedule. Yeah, I mean, it's kind of see what we're made of schedule, you know. I think Sternbridge is going to be a really solid team that we face tonight, be a really good test and measure stick to see where we're at early in the season and, you know, like I say, Clear Springs, they won the state championship last year. I believe uh, Highland School out of Virginia, they're pretty solid. I think Jefferson may have played them last year as well. But, uh, you know, I was kind of in a situation in year two trying to get as many games as I could for the kids after last year, you know, getting the position later in the off season, I wasn't able to put together a full schedule. So I really worked hard to make sure we get these kids playing as much as they can this year.